4.30 in the morning and the party's just starting in Lisbon's trendy docklands. Places like this attract thousands of clubbers every night. They're the new and glitzy face of this vibrant city. Outside the club, there's an utterly different face of Lisbon life. Ricardo Oliveira is earning money for heroin. It's a simple scam for a fee he protects parked cars. Once a rich young clubber himself, he paid addicts to look after his car outside these clubs. My life is this, to come to buy a car, to buy money and consume it, to buy money and consume it, to buy money and buy money and buy money, and buy money, like that, days and days and days and days. Faced with the worst hard drugs epidemic in Europe, the Portuguese government is trying to break the vicious circle in which addicts like Ricardo are trapped and which already killed his brother a year ago. In July this year, they're taking the radical step of decriminalizing the use of soft and hard drugs. The political repressives don't have given results visible in part in part of the world. Portanto, associando esta esta nova perspectiva de considerar o tóxico dependente como um doente, promover o seu tratamento e ao mesmo tempo fazer um combate forte ao tráfico de droga, à lavagem de de dinheiro. Lying beneath Lisbon's landmark bridge is an ancient slum called Castel Ventoso. It's visible proof that up until now, Portugal's drug policies simply haven't worked. These are known as the Steps of Death. Lined with drug takers, they lead into the heart of Castel Ventoso. This is the path that Ricardo and as many as 5,000 addicts take each day. It's a drugs bazaar. Everyone here is selling or buying. Strangers are often beaten up. The only way we could film was with a secret camera. People call this Lisbon's drug supermarket. It's the biggest and most open drugs market in Europe. Each dealer has his doorway. The most popular have long queues waiting to buy. They vie for business, shouting their wares and prices. The whole micro-economy of the drugs industry exists here. Sellers of needles and sellers of tin foil line the alleyways. Word of a rare police patrol is shouted down the alley. The police don't take much notice of what's going on in Castel Ventoso, and minutes later, it's business as usual. Dealers rent a doorway for about £100 an hour but can turn over an astonishing £30,000 a day. This man, Matrix, is one of the biggest dealers, one of the most ruthless and the most feared. Addicts say he has a lot of blood on his hands. So great is Casal Ventoso's notoriety that only one A-team dares work here. Calling themselves simply the street team, they supply clean needles as best they can and call in medical help when they discover overdosed addicts. Carlos Fugas says the street team is trying to help people like Ricardo, whom the rest of Portuguese society shuns. Casal Ventoso is a sort of open wound in Portuguese society. Politicians in Portugal talk a lot about drugs. They use drugs for political and electoral campaigns, but uh, they close their eyes to reality, and the reality is very cruel. Carlos Fugas favors decriminalization as the only way to help the growing numbers of addicts. It shouldn't be a crime, he says, being so self-destructive. But for many addicts, there isn't much that even the street team can do. Portugal has the highest rate of HIV infection in the EU and is the only country in the region where infection rates are rising. In Castel Ventoso, it's estimated that an astonishing 48% of addicts are infected. It's easy to see why. Ricardo, like most other drugs users here, injects a mixture of heroin and cocaine with lemon juice. They call it speedball. Okay. 
e tu não tens os dentes para os padares por uma seringa. Então é assim, preferes comprar uma dose um bocadinho mais elevada pelos dentes de paus e utilizares uma seringa no chão ou uma seringa usada do que comprares um bocadinho menos de droga e comprares uma seringa nova. Eu sou ser positivo é para seis anos. Uh, atualmente estou com uma broncopneumonia, uh, estou a viver na rua. O médico disse-me que quem me está a encobrir as doenças todas as oportunistas que eu tenho porque não é só a broncopneumonia. Unlike Ricardo, Sandra has escaped the HIV plague. She knows she's one of the lucky ones. Porque as drogas, aquilo que eu penso é um hospital, ou é prisão, ou é um cemitério. Poucos que começaram a parar lá ao mesmo tempo, pouca gente sobrevive. Outros estão quase a morrer porque têm doenças, outros porque andam lá os caídos. In her late teens and before she started on drugs, Sandra was a part-time model. These days, she says, many of her fellow addicts have turned to prostitution to get money, something Sandra says she'd never do. Instead, she gets her money through a scam, a deception she goes about quite ruthlessly. She and her boyfriend make up little AIDS ribbons. Then, in wealthy shopping streets, they solicit money, saying it's to help children with AIDS. <laughs> it's an appealing cause, and many are deceived by her pitch. Sandra leaves happy she's closer to a next fix of heroin. With its long coast, many ports and overland routes to the rest of Europe, Portugal is being used more and more as one of the busiest gateways for moving drugs into Western Europe. Most worrying is the quantity of heroin being brought through Portugal by Turkish gangs. And that they intend to use the Peninsula Ibérica as a giratória, chamemos-lhe assim, para depois distribuir a heroína para outros lados, nomeadamente dentro da União Europeia. Recently, police in Lisbon seized one of Europe's largest ever drug hauls, a staggering 227 kilos of top-grade heroin worth over 10 million pounds on the street. With the EU's open trade policies, it's easier for drugs like these to pass into the rest of Europe. Opponents of decriminalization, such as former Member of Parliament, Maria Jose Pinto, say the new law will only make matters worse. Além disso, nós vivemos num espaço comunitário, subscrevemos o Acordo de Schengen e eu penso que aqui tinha que haver uma política comum eh, contra a toxicodependência e não políticas privadas portuguesas que eventualmente vão provocar uma importação de riscos e de problemas para Portugal, uma espécie de turismo da droga. Nós em Portugal eh, temos eh, essa autoridade, essa autonomia, uma política interna que nós podemos eh, seguir temos o problema e temos a obrigação de fazer alguma coisa para resolver. The decriminalization bill has already gone through parliament. From July, possessing up to 10 days supply of hard drugs such as heroin will be no more serious than a parking offence. But alongside decriminalization, the government intends to intensify its campaign against drug dealers. And the city council has started flattening Castel Ventoso making way for new flats. Under the new law, they'll also provide treatment for addicts, but critics claim that won't be possible given the present facilities. Fundamentalmente, o que está em questão é a prevenção, o tratamento e a reinserção do toxicodependente. Esta lei, do meu ponto de vista, não resolve absolutamente nenhum destes problemas. Não temos centros de tratamento em número suficiente, não temos camas em número suficiente, a reinserção é muito duvidosa e, a nível da prevenção, não se tem feito absolutamente nada. As Casal Ventoso is demolished, the government will face a new problem, the dispersal of thousands of addicts across the city. Up to now, many have been concentrated in ghettos like Casal Ventoso and its crack houses. They're full of young people smoking crack and shooting up speedball. 
It's in places like these where many young Portuguese are first introduced to hard drugs. In the background is the house boss, known as the chef, cooking up the mixture in the corner. But there is still some hope for Sandra. She lives with a family and she has the support of her parents. And although she's uncertain whether decriminalization will help her, it could, she says, stop others getting involved in drugs. Continuava, não é? Mas dentro já dos limites, pronto. E havia pessoas que nunca consumiram, que já, se calhar não tinham aquela, ter aquela curiosidade em experimentar porque já era uma coisa normal. For Ricardo, though, the future doesn't look too good. The police have taken away the wreck that was his home and his pneumonia is getting worse. Now he sleeps in doorways or wherever he can find a dry place. Passo noites sem ter de chorar e chego inclusivamente a pensar que eu vou morrer exatamente como o meu irmão. Se não for como o meu irmão, é pior ainda, é porque estou doente, porque sou ser opositivo, coisa que ele não era e que vou acabar por ir numa valeta. OK. But in Lisbon's trendy docklands, the party goes on. These clubbers may be safe for now, but will decriminalization do anything to protect people like them from sinking into the world of drugs, just as Ricardo and Sandra have done? Because when it comes to heroin and cocaine as well, it seems the party's only just begun. Martin Adler, Lisbon, Portugal.